This is the House of Hockey podcast, where we talk about the game and the lifestyle. We've got opinions as hockey fans, friends, and from the female perspective. Welcome to our house. Welcome to the House of Hockey podcast, episode 171. I'm one of your hosts, Breezy. And I'm your other host, Ray. The biggest news of the weekend was... Laney Wilson won her first won a Grammy. Grammy. <laughs> I was Ooh. waiting for that one. Did you see Miley's performance? I saw clips of it, yeah. Oh my god, she's so great. She's fantastic. Her speech was she's... like very all over the place, but you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch the Grammys, but I, I yeah. No. Obviously, Laney's thing pulled up immediately. And I was like, I'm so proud of her. She's so great. And then I kept seeing Miley's videos of her just being Miley. Yeah. And I loved it. She is, she's the best. Like, let's be real. She is. She's the best. She is so freely her and just lives. Just iconic. Just She's she's just iconic. We need that, you know? Mm -hmm. That. That. She's like. Would she be considered the modern day Madonna? I hate doing that kind of comparison thing. I don't think you can truly compare, but no, you can't. But like the way that she acted in in yes. uh, the Grammy, yeah, and just sort of not being afraid to try new things. I don't like the word reinventing mm-hmm. herself because, like, I also don't think that applies. But just doing new things, doing different music, changing her look. Mm-hmm. Just freely yeah. being who she is and doing what she wants, I think, is awesome. Yeah. Okay, she's but great. but really that wasn't like that was Breezy and I's big moment of the weekend. But there was so much ha- that happened over the weekend. We've got a couple of quick topics to cover. Olympics, four nations, all star weekend, uh PWHL news, we've got Elmo, we've got punchable faces and a lot to cover and i'm very excited to talk about all of this starting with i am so happy the boys are going back to the olympics i am too i saw the news and i was like they needed that because they've been asking to go back yes they were dealing with financial Mm -hmm. agreements and getting the right money and price to get the boys to play and have the season pause for what, probably like two weeks, maybe more. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, they already get a break anyway. Yeah. I mean, the boys who aren't all-stars get a break. (laughs) Yeah. But then like you think about it, like if you're playing for your country, like that's something different. Oh, I think the pride amongst the players and the honor to be Mm -hmm. able to do this and for so many of them, it's been over 10 years to be able to yeah. do, have the opportunity to do it and qualify for it. I just, I'm so, so excited. And I'm sure there's probably some boys who've never played in the Olympics and maybe aren't even playing anymore. And that sucks yeah. for them. But this is- Because you figure this could be like Sid's last year playing for his for his country, which, I mean, that's sad. That's actually I'm, sad to think about. <laughs> I know, but he played in the Olympics, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if you had an opportunity to play every time the Olympics yeah. came around, like you would do it. Yeah. But if you can't, then like that kind of sucks. It does. I'm stoked. Yeah. It's in Milan, Italy. I'm like this, in- like that would be enough reason for me to want to go. I love everything Italian and Italy, except I- it would be my worst nightmare going to an Olympics with all of those people. I just would not. Yeah. I would not be able to enjoy a minute of it unless I was. No, you'd be getting cover. cannolis. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be trying cannolis in every city, like yeah. within the vicinity of every restaurant and rating them. Yeah. That's what I would be mm-hmm. doing. Yep. Yeah. We'd get yeah. weekly, no, daily updates on, on the cannolis. Today's cannoli is. <laughs> oh, that Ray's would be. cannoli adventures. That would be a dream. Are you kidding? That would be. That would be my Olympics. The cannoli fest. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Ridiculous. Um, so yeah, so that's in 2026. So we have two years, but have no fear 
the players Ooh. will have the opportunity to have a little warm up, if you will, because the NHL has decided to do a four nations face off. They're calling it. And this will be next February of 2025 where they're going to do some sort of mid-season tournament between U.S., Canada, Finland, and Sweden. Now, oh, there aren't... be nice. Yeah, there aren't really a whole lot of details about what all that is, but this is, I think, going to be their warm-up to, for the league to test out, like, how this break's going to work, right, for the mm-hmm. following year with the Olympics. Getting the players an opportunity to sort of hopefully team up with some of the people that they would be playing with. Plus, I mean, it's not going to just be NHL players, I don't think, on those teams in the Olympics. So this Mm -hmm. tournament, I believe, is only NHL players, uh, which I think will be really fun to see these guys play each other uh, in this way. Also notably missing is a Russian team, probably due to political reasons, but uh, yeah, that's not Mm -hmm. on the list. But Mm -hmm. But then if you add Canada, then you need to, or Russia, then you would need to add in another country. And it's like. What mm-hmm. country are we picking here? I know. What would we pick? Probably like Slovakia or something like that. Yeah. Some, another yeah. one of those countries up in the north. Yeah. <laughs> that I can't think of at the moment. But I think that will be interesting to, I think that could be really interesting and we'll see how that plays out. More news, of course, will follow. Um, I guess Mm -hmm. we, well, let's do a little bad news for Breezy. I, well, I'm, okay. Tell everyone the bad news. Let me figure this out. Okay. Well, the Kings fired their head coach. Well, we all know how I feel about recycled coaches anyway. Mm Mm-hmm. However, I don't think it was Todd's fault. It's not. And when you have players who are not performing, it's not necessarily the coach's fault because they he can't force players to play harder. So that 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 was an out. That was an easy out and it's still I, it's not going to until the players start playing better, then that's what it's going to happen. And they're going to say, oh, the coaching change worked because the players are not performing. No. 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 The Who's players the just need coach? to perform. Uh, Jim something. I, I'm drawing a blank on the name. It's just like an interim coach at this mm. point, like just coming up. Um, because uh, I, you don't go from winning, what, 16 games in a row mm-hmm. at the very beginning of the season and be like, oh, yeah. To then losing and then be like, coach's fault. No. Mm-mm. Because why did the coach help them win 16 games straight and like set like a record? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some could argue that he didn't have control over the players or have their respect. I'm sure that's the I feel like. It, but... Yeah, but they also said the same thing about Sutter and like what Sutter did. And then you know that was the case where like – they had bad relations in that locker room because of that. But with Todd, I mean, they look like they were, it it never seemed like, I mean, I'm not in the locker room, but it never seemed like that. Mm -mm. And it was just most, I mean, if you have Drew Doughty calling out people, calling out players, saying it's not the coach's fault, it's the players worrying about their own individual points and needing to do it for themselves and, or for the team. And then still not performing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hard. And Drew Doughty would be the one that would say there's a coaching problem. For sure. Like, let's be real. Yeah. He's not afraid of everybody. No. Call out what needs to be changed. And the other thing is, this is an example of how important we talk about this all the time. The Mm -hmm. in locker room team camaraderie of the players is the it is so important that you have a group of guys who are in it for the team and in it and believe in what they're doing and are are fully on board with it and it sounds like something shifted dramatically at the mm-hmm. halfway point of the season for that team and they are not in it and they are not yeah. going to win it just it's on unless something um changes in their mindset but i don't know what that is 
some something big would have to happen to flip that switch back. <coughs> yeah, someone's gonna say everybody's saying the uh, Dubois curse oh. is here. So, <laughs> well, the, some of the stats do say otherwise, which we've talked about, but that that mm -hmm. there is a curse or there is there some, is a, there's something something going. Except how can you hate him? He like did a whole feature on like animal rescues in LA and like did a whole social media. Yeah. Part. I mean, it's, it's all, it's all noise, right? Like <laughs> yeah. it's, it comes down to, to more than just a, a single player and, and things that, <laughs> but well, I do like watching the puppies. I know. The little tiny know. little guys. They're so, so cute. I would just want to save all the animals quit all the rest of this and then go on a cannoli tour sounds great the um i feel like you need to get a dog like a new dog not a new dog but like another dog we need another dog him, and name him cannoli oh <gasps> so idea. cute it's a I, good idea i think that should be the name of my next dog is cannoli it should be this cannoli it could be a boy or a girl too i feel like it fits yeah and then you could be like, holy cannoli. Exactly. It, it's just great. They have to be like tan and white. I'm going to like just search for a dog that looks like, solely looks like a cannoli so I can name it cannoli. That's the dog I'm going to save. So lucky day yes. for that dog. Lucky um, day. If you look like a cannoli, you're coming home with me. <laughs> okay. All-star weekend. A uh, lot yeah. happened. We cannot cover all of it. Uh, overall, I thought the amount of content, good content, entertainment value wise, we got through socials was great. Mm -hmm. Lots of great moments, lots of fun, reshareable content, brought some giggles and some entertainment to me. Uh, <gasps> you what? Yeah. You giggled at something? Um especially having to probably no. do with Austin Matthews. <laughs> no, I did not giggle. I think I smiled at a few things. So mm. I giggled when uh when Austin was putting his gear up and, and Bieber was just sitting there and just <laughs> put his private yeah. part right in Bieber's and, <laughs> and Justin goes, You dirty little boy. <laughs> That's oh, so funny. Boys are weird. Boys are they're so, so weird. They're so funny. I like their like, relationship. I feel like I would do that with like my boobs. Like I would like put my boobs in front of like your face or something. Like if you were sitting yeah. and I was like, like just to be funny, yeah. you know? It's just to be funny. Yeah. Yeah. Like just. It happens all the day. Yeah. Like Sarah, my friend Sarah. Mm -hmm. She used to do like, I used to wear more like low cut tops and we would go out to the club. 10 years ago mm -hmm. and yeah. she would take her finger put it in between my boobs and go no, 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 no. <laughs> just like i don't know why like this it was just so weird and funny and like i don't know you know so don't do it too we've all got our things <laughs> or maybe it's just me maybe i'm really a hockey player on the inside i don't know that is so funny <laughs> yeah she would just do it. And I was like, okay, we're doing it. I don't care. Well, the next I, time you're at her house, she better do this live on air. I, I will make her do it. I will make okay. her do it. I will make her do it to me. Oh, that's so I don't funny. Think there's, no, there's no video proof of that. But anyway. Okay, yeah. what was your high and low of the All-Star Game weekend? Like favorite uh, moment, least favorite moment. Or like happiest thing you saw and stupidest thing you saw. Oh, gosh, what did I see? I mostly just saw from social clips. Mm -hmm. um, the coolest moment I thought was Rick Tockett and Wayne Gretzky behind the bench together. I loved seeing the TNT boys. Well, you know, because talk was on for a season, mm -hmm. but I loved seeing them behind the bench. And also how terrifying to be the players on that team with Gretzky standing behind you. Yeah. Like, ooh, better turn up and actually put some effort in here and uh, not disappoint the great one. So that was yeah. um, a high for me. 
I had a lot of lows, which I'm sure we're not surprised, but the, the lowest of the low that I am going to pick is Nikita Kucherov. Okay. Did, did I just not. saw something come up on this, him today. This guy he was either hungover, phoned it in, gives zero fucks. We know he gives zero fucks, right? Like as just what we've seen from post-game pressers when he won the Stanley Cup and everything. But during the skill, one of the skills competitions, he mm-hmm. phoned it in, like did not put in any effort to try to compete, could not have cared less. And he got a lot of heat for it, except, and also he should, but also it's a little funny, but, (laughs) but also like, why is the league putting this guy there then? Like, this is not helping the league. This is not the example you want to set for the next generation of players that you can be an asshole and show up to the Mm -hmm. all-star game and then just be a dick about it. I mean, come on, you know, like this is you're representing the league at this point and and Mm -hmm. not necessarily your team. This is the all-star game is a whole promo for the league. So don't put that guy there then, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, don't, don't, don't come, don't come. If you're going to have that kind of attitude, it's like, this, this could be fun. Uh, Yeah. You're bitter. You're not in Mexico or in Dubai with Ovechkin and like having a grand old time, but Okay. It's like part of what you sign up for. Suck it up. Just put in a little effort. So that was my low. Right. <clears throat> What's your high and low? Okay. Um. So just going off of what I've seen, because I wasn't able to watch any of it really. Um. I really liked how they included, like, did the um, like the influencer, like the game, like on, like outside, like that was fun. Mm-hmm. for the whole weekend you know yes and the whole like skills comp and the all-star game like i like the skills comp but like it does get boring so and then when you don't watch it it's just like whatever so uh but i did see clips that uh like hillary knight was out for the influencer game and that just looked like a lot of fun mm-hmm. and that it would have been probably more fun to watch because you got those guys doing trick shots and just being goofy and then I also, okay, I didn't like how every single player had to take a picture with Justin Bieber. Yeah. Like, isn't there more to do than just take a, like, don't get me wrong, I love the Biebs. But it was like every single picture you saw, like a team post, Yeah, it was their player with Justin Bieber. <laughs> yeah. That was a little weird. I didn't really, I was like, that, I mean, I guess it's not my low. I don't think I have a low. It was just like a, that wasn't my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was. Like, they all were asking to take a picture with him. Mm-hmm. Which is, I mean, it's normal, but, like, to to have, like, every, like, social media post on my feed end up being, like, someone with Justin Bieber was like, yeah. okay, I get it. I get it. I wish I was there, too. I get it. <laughs> yeah. It was a little overkill, I think, mm-hmm. on the Thieves content. Yeah. yeah. I have a mixed feeling about Biebs. It was really cute to see him be genuinely like a fan and just mm-hmm. you could feel his like genuine excitement to be there, to be like around all these guys. Like he wishes he could have been an NHL player. Like just like, you know, all of those moments I think mm-hmm. really made him super relatable to us fans along with Will Arnett um mm-hmm. Michael Bublé not so much and then who was the other celebrity coach oh yeah Tate McRae Tate McRae yeah there was zero content from her like verbal content from her anywhere hmm. I didn't see hardly anything of her being like fangirling about being there with all these guys like yeah. whatever I'm over her but I think <laughs> the Seeing those moments and hearing from those celebrities in that way is how Mm -hmm. all of us feel and all of us watching and how we would all be freaking out and just have like a loss of words to be able to coach these guys and be around all of them. And I think that was one of the winningest moments and successes of this All-Star Weekend. Yeah. Just 
you're connecting with the fans and that bottom line to me is the most important thing. Yeah. So hands down. <clears throat> and of course, McDavid won everything solo, which is not of surprising because he's going to continue to just win all the solo awards and never have a Stanley cup. So there's that. And then <laughs> the Leafs actually won something. They won the thing that means the least, which is the all-star game. <laughs> Yay. Leafs. So sarcastic. Yeah. So sarcastic. Yeah. Um, uh, cool. What's your note? Oh, and <laughs> Betsy got to go. Connor Bedard got he to did. go. It's feasible. It's feeling so nice that 18 year old body just healing up real well for him. It looks, him. it looks so good. It looks so good. The bruising is minimal now. He's like ready to go. He looked like a yeah. fish out of water. Yeah. Like in awe. Just, just totally in awe and i thought it was super yeah. adorable yeah that's cute yeah what do you have that here cute. okay maybe this is just me but i feel like every rookie season for like the the up-and-coming guys every single time they get hurt yeah fantasy uh kirby doc bedard bedard mcdavid broke his leg yeah. What is that? Is that, are we just like putting these boys out there too soon? No, I think it maybe it's just, okay, maybe it's just them not knowing how to play at that like level of speed, like knowing how to do it and like being physically able to do it, but like feeling maybe like, oh my God, like I need to step it up and then working extra hard and then just being injury prone i guess but i don't i don't know the answer to that but i'm like so now all the rookies just get injured in their rookie season yeah yeah it's a thing it's not great it's i don't a thing. i really don't think they're prepared for a lot of the defensive elements of the mm -hmm. game and the love and and again they're 18 some of them they're not fully developed humans and they're playing against 30 year olds who are built like a brick shit house right you're gonna get hurt i mean just i don't know physics right uh, velocity mass volume speed i don't know there's a formula i'm sure there's mm -hmm. like facts that it's like yeah that's gonna happen if you're not careful and doing what you need to but you are correct i noticed that uh, as mm -hmm. well, especially when Fantilli went out, but that was a freak thing with him with yeah. the blade to his um, leg. But still, mm -hmm. yeah. doesn't matter. Some doesn't matter. Got to protect our boys. That's also why <coughs> I am not like a big. I'm like hesitant to rely on rookies coming in their first season and expecting mm -hmm. a lot. And also, just the draft with rookies. It's like you don't know what's going to happen. They're young. Yeah, there's a lot that can swing one way or the other way very quickly when you're that yeah. young and coming into right. the league. But anyway. Yeah. PWHL news. Yeah. I saw this and I thought it was really, really awesome. Actually hearing from NHL players talking mm -hmm. about how awesome the PWHL is and the players and how they're, watching the highlights and they're you know watching the games and they're just just buzzing about them if you will yeah mm -hmm. uh it happened uh the sound bites came from the ottawa senators um tim stutzla and jacob chikrin they mm -hmm. were interviewed about that and this is where canada keeps getting it right they did a whole like sends skill competition within their team, I guess. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they brought in some of the PWHL players. And so That's they're cool. like really doing a great job marketing them. And mm -hmm. as opposed to, uh, well, that's also the capital of Canada, right? The or like the countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I don't, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I know what you mean. So they do like they had their prime minister there and, you know, all of these things. And they're really doing a, a big push to market this. And I think we could be doing a little bit more uh, stateside in the United States. 
Yeah, definitely. But it was good to see. And then all of these people in the comments are so stupid. I don't like calling anybody stupid, but like so stupid. They're be better. Yeah. Is that be your, what you're saying? Yeah. Be better. Be be, be no grown. be good. Be grown. Be grown. Be grown. They're saying like, oh, like these boys acting like girls can't play hockey and how surprised they are. I'm like, that's not what they're doing. They're praising, <laughs> they're giving you, they're giving you the attention that is deserved from their mouths. We need them. Stop hating on these men. We need the men. You need the NHL players to be on board and promoting them and talking positively for fuck's sake about the women's league. I was like, oh God, I am going to lose it in the comments if I start going after these people who are just like, oh, how do you not know? Uh, they do know. And this is called press and publicity for the league. Get a fucking grip. Be grown and like see the big picture, you idiots. I can't. It was, I was like, people are pissing me off, man, big time. Like, oh my God, I love it. It's like, get, get with the program. This is good. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. This is good. For this the is league. good. <laughs> like, do you it's not under new stand how the world works okay yeah i like uh good in the league and i liked the uh the survey of yeah. <laughs> who, who most likely to get punched in the face okay i was really surprised about that of like survey with nick cousins being the number one answer well yeah nick cousins is is becoming well not becoming like he is a very not well-liked player for many reasons just because he's He's Nick Cousins. <laughs> Apparently. I like I like him a little bit though, but Yeah. That's funny. I laughed. And I was yeah. like I feel like other people should have made that list, but that's okay. Well, the second most was like a bunch of other people. Like yeah. not one singular player. So Yeah. And then Marsha Tom I Wilson was like so far down on the list too. And I was like, oh, well, he's probably, he's been punched in the face many times. Like, I think he's probably old news now. <laughs> yeah. And Brad Marchand, of course, yeah. pretty high up on the list, but yeah. yeah, I was a little surprised. I'm like, oh, okay. We're going with yeah. cousins. All right. Cool. There you go. We have a little one, two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then the other story I was loving and I don't know how the league let them do this, but apparently Elmo, like from mm -hmm. Sesame Street, tweeted, how is everybody, your friend Elmo just checking checking in? And the Twitter or the X took over with like, people's comments were so bluntly honest about like, just being really bad. Like everybody uh -huh. is feeling horrible. And the Arizona yeah. Coyotes tweeted, um, oh, just have nowhere to live and no chance of ever winning a Stanley Cup. <laughs> Something like that. I got to find it. I was like, that actually, I'm laughing. That actually you are made me laugh. I was like, I can't believe the team tweeted that. I like, how could they? They said, just need a Stanley Cup in a home, but other than that, couldn't be better. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. I, I like it. Just like I'm call. liking the coyotes. I am liking the coyotes. Yeah, I could not believe they just like called that out. I I was dying. Oh, yeah. There was also some news somewhere that uh, the coyotes are working with some other government municipality, mm -hmm. either the state or different cities, about purchasing some land. So there's some yeah, Northern there. Phoenix. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what well, happens. Exactly. It's not even worth talking yeah. about given this way that their stadium, no stadium, home, no home thing has been going. Yeah. Who's your hunk of the week, Breezy? Um, Philip Forsberg. Why? Don't say because he's, of his mustache. He's just so cute. He's just such a handsome guy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um. Mine is Tyler Bertuzzi. Okay. Because he donated his hair to kids with cancer. That's oh, why he broke okay. his hair out. Okay. Um, 
he said, a lady in Michigan does it for me. So it was kind of the perfect time. And he cut his hair off and donated it to kids with cancer. Very nice. What a guy. Like, love him. I love this for him. This is amazing. That's great. Yeah. I love it. I think it's, see, we need more of this content. Like, we need more of this from from all of the people and the cannoli tour. (laughs) And then I'll be happy one day. Yeah, one day. (laughs) One day. Nothing's ever going to make my glass half full. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. All right. That's it. Until next week. Yep. Okay. Peace out, Girl Scout. He grown. Thanks for coming over to our House of Hockey podcast and hanging out with us. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And in the meantime, you can follow us on social media. Just look for House of Hockey podcast. We'll be back next week. 